All right, fingers crossed. This is like <laughs> the fifth recording. Okay. Hello, hello. Welcome to the Weirdest of the Weird podcast. My name is Nathan, and yes, I am still here. <laughs> uh, yes, I do acknowledge that there's. It's been a minute. It's 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 been a minute since the last episode, which was about uh two two weeks no <laughs> two weeks oh wow i wish two weeks um two months ago was when i last posted my last episode uh apologies are in order for sure uh i am sorry uh a lot of things came up for me personally in my life um i actually recently came back from vacation uh at the beginning of this week so I was planning on posting an episode before leaving, um, but again, in all honesty, when it comes down to it, I'm a pretty stubborn guy, and again, just the sheer lack of motivation was also what came up, but again, I don't want to make any promises, but I will try and stick to a hopefully consistent schedule, um, and be posting videos on more of a regular basis, aside from just two months. Um, again, no promises, so. <laughs> um, couple of updates on the channel in general, in terms of specifics. Um, so, my idea of moving some of the podcast episodes to Spotify is... It's not gonna be soon. Um, that idea is just gonna be in limbo for a while. Um, until I can figure out, um, when specifically I can figure out how to do that. Um, so it's, it's going to be a while, uh, in terms of when the podcast is going to be moved on to Spotify. Um, so again, no promises, but eventually, uh, some of the episodes will go up, up there. So, um... I think that concludes what I have to talk about on terms of updates and life updates on the channel. Um, In today's episode, we're going to be doing kind of a bit of a split review on two films, but also we're going to do between these two films kind of a compare and contrast um, because I, I really do see these two films similar and also different but they kind of have the same common traits and i thought it'd be interesting to just cover that and you know talk about it um so the two films in question that we're going to be talking about today are phantom thread and there will be blood and these movies are both directed by paul thomas anderson and again we're just going to be doing a review on both of them just a little short review And then eventually, towards the end, I'll start talking about my, you know, my ideas specifically on what they're similar in terms of both the films as well as what they do different. Um, All right. Yeah. So There Will Be Blood uh, is directed by Paul Thomas Anderson and it came out in 2007 and the premise of the story overall is uh oh yeah before i delve into summary um spoiler alert i will be delving into some spoilers for both films so if you haven't seen both the movies uh stop stop listening to this podcast and uh i highly recommend you go check it out uh go check out both the films um and then come back and then we'll we'll debrief so okay there will be blood uh came out in 2007 again directed by paul thomas anderson and it tells a story of daniel plainview and like his name like his last name really states he's just a man striving like any other person at the beginning of the 20th century uh when this movie takes place in the 1900s uh in discovering oil in california And he strives, he really does strive to make it a life goal through utter sheer ruthless selfishness and greed uh, to amass success uh, in this business and pretty much leave 
no scraps and nothing for his fellow competitors. Um, I mean, as he does state best in the film, uh, I have a competition in me. I want no one else to succeed. And his greed, not only uh, in being ruthless and competing in, in his business side of things, uh, it starts to become a lifestyle for him. And uh, it just, watching the film, you slowly start to see it overtake and corrupt him but he is careless to this and he has no intention of stopping um this trait of his uh this idea that stems and corrupts his whole life um and just makes him again overall a very horrible person um and at the end of the film he does get what he wants being on top of the business side of things and enjoying his riches and, you know, at the expense of being in an empty mansion by himself. Uh, but this comes at the cost of not having family, not having friends, and basically having everyone, everyone despise him. Um... Yeah, it's a uh, it's a pretty it's a pretty dark movie, <laughs> shall we say? Um, but yeah, and then Phantom Thread uh, came out in twenty seventeen. Uh, I realized, l kind of researching a little bit of uh, you know that you know the films itself, uh, both again There Will Be Blood and you know, Phantom Thread have a 10 year, exact 10 year gap between each other. Uh, and both have Daniel Day Lewis and are both directed by Paul Thomas Anderson. And I'm just thinking, uh, a bit of a coincidence there. But, anyways, besides the point, so Phantom Thread takes place uh, in post World War II Britain. Um, and we're shown our main character, Reynolds Woodcock, who is a you know, a high society dressmaker who makes dresses um, and is known for being a very eccentric person and has very specific methods and ways uh, for both his lifestyle and his work on how he produces these amazing dresses for high society and, you know, wowing these members of high society. So he very much so... This lifestyle entails him being very closed off from society in general, um, not having many friends, not choosing to have long-lasting relationship with these models, um, and it's that's his lifestyle. And this all comes into question when he meets Alma and falls madly in love with her. Um, she, her very presence in his life, as it increases, um, it starts to upend and kind of mess up his lifestyle. And so towards the end of the film, he has to pick a very difficult decision between choosing his life's work or Alma. And, you know, it's, a. Uh, it's very interesting to see, for sure. Um, and it's, again, it's, it, it is very fascinating to see, just from both films, again, Daniel Day-Lewis's acting, but also, again, from the supporting cast, uh, Paul Dano, who plays um, Eli, uh, the pastor in There Will Be Blood, gives... A really really good performance I mean I know a lot of people now more recently because his most recent film was Batman when he played the Riddler um, but I feel like you know this his um, his role and there will be blood in playing father Eli really did you know solidify him as a great actor and really put him on the map um, and Again, it he really does 
match the energy of performance wise of Daniel Day Lewis because again there are some solo scenes in the film where it's just them uh specifically towards the end so again to in my opinion to try and match a great you know basically the goat of acting um in terms of acting is very impressive in my opinion um and then same for vicky creeps uh hang on let me just i don't want to butcher her name <laughs> um uh, yeah so vicky cripes i'm probably butchering her last name but she plays alma in phantom thread and again like paul dano she is very much so able to in more than one scene in phantom thread she's able to match the energy of daniel day lewis again he's he's a goat so it's um i give very much so props to her and for both films the supporting cast as well because it it is aside from principal actors in a film you also need to have a supporting cast that really ebbs and flows into the director's idea of what it is they want to capture in terms of emotion and overall in terms of storytelling. So I give, you know, both films are amazing in this aspect. Um, moving on to similarities and differences, I feel like let's just get, you know, the big thing out of the way. Uh, both of the main characters uh and the portrayal of both of these characters in both films. So with with There Will Be Blood, Daniel Daniel Plainview, he strives. He really does, you know, motivate himself uh, in his mindset and makes it an inner conflict that he refuses. And it's not even a conflict, I would say. It's more of, it's just, okay, I just need to get this done. And he is willing with his, he's willing to ruthlessly get that outcome to get what of, to get what he wants in the end of it. Um, there is no denying it. He will get that. Um, whether it's the ability to charismatically, you know, convince people in business terms of having common folk hand over their land and understand that he will split profits and make them understand that it's, you know, giving a sweet deal uh, for him to basically just poke a hole in the ground and drill a crap ton of oil out of it, um, but also in making sure that he keeps a majority profits, but not to cheat that person. Or I say cheat very lightly because he does cheat, but and in that business it does make sense but again he is trying to retain as much profit as possible and again this goes back to i need to have more money than my competitors because like he says i have a competition in me and i want no one else to succeed so you know that is one main way of showing that um and in this quest for getting what he wants, no matter what, um, he doesn't care about anyone. He he only cares about what he wants, and he doesn't care about people, the people around him, um, and people's feelings. And uh, he will get what he wants by any means necessary, whether that requires him to sacrifice himself uh or not sacrifice himself but sacrifice his social life shall we say and alienate himself um whereas with reynolds uh reynolds woodcock he will get what he wants but he will brood and he will pout and in some cases in the film you see him openly beg and plead with people to get what he wants and in this you kind of see 
kind of very subtle, unresolved insecurities and stubbornness from himself that, you know, initially he refuses to change. And again, this is kind of what I prefer if I were to pick between the two. I love Phantom Thread. That This is why I love Phantom Thread is because it does, you know, not through a sheer, you know, ruthless character who is, you know, all masculinity. You know, this is a character who is, Reynolds is very much so a flawed character. Um, he comes to terms in questioning in his life what is materialistic and does not matter. Whereas, you know, morally to himself, the people and things that do matter. And to him, he starts to question this when he meets Alma. Alma is that person that does matter. Um, and in contrast to this, Daniel, you know, he does get what he wants, but again, he again does get rich selfishly to prove not only just to others, but to himself that I am finished. I am king of the hill and I have gotten what I want. And that is, again, at the end of the day, the only thing that matters. And it, it, it is really, it is really sad to see. Um, not to even mention the fact that he uses his adopted son as kind of a marketing tool, I feel like, uh, to, you know, he, he uses his son basically as a marketing tool and, you know, labels him a quote unquote valuable associate and actually in the middle of the film openly puts him in harm's way of getting a, like a crap ton of, you know, you know, getting nearly blown up by one of his drills. Um, and it's, yeah, it's inter it's, Again, you really do go back to that for Daniel, that questionable, he's he's willing not to even question questionable things that you would do in life um, for close people or people you consider family um, and best friends. Um, putting them in harm's way, he would in no, he wouldn't even question, you know, that his son was kind of, again, not something in the background, something that didn't matter, um, which is pretty messed up. <laughs> um, but in one thing that both these characters do have in common, and you see this in the backdrop of the film and shown throughout the film, is that they really do have a lot of care and respect for the work that they do. Um Daniel making sure that his workers are compensated for and, you know, just rip as much oil from the ground and Reynolds and making sure that every detail on his dress is left, you know, not up to chance and that he checks the final touches and makes sure that the dresses are perfect, basically. Uh, in terms of atmosphere and film, or you know, shots in both of these films. These films could not be any different. Um, I feel like There Will Be Blood's filmography is you waking up extremely early for the day and having to do what you have to do, say, excuse me, um, going to work or going to class, but you've half, you, you woke up an extremely early hour uh, and you couldn't go back to sleep or you were forced to wake up at this early hour. And as you're doing what you're doing throughout the day, you're starting to slowly fall asleep. But 
you're having to force yourself awake. You're having to force your eyelids to stay peeled back. Um, and this, again, this reflects the uncomfortable vision and, you know, the setting of where there will be blood takes place in the bone dry regions of California, uh, where the oil's being plucked out of from the ground. Um, and also kind of reflects the brood and dryly, you know, horrible personality of Daniel. Um, if, even if he does have a personality, I don't know. <laughs> but, um, yeah. And then in contrast to that, Phantom Thread is almost like a dream that is too good to be true. Lighting is very soft and delicate and... You know, it reflects Ryan's, er, pff, Ryan, wow, I was about to really say Ryan Reynolds, sorry, his, his, guys, his first name is Reynolds in this film, okay, it's, ah, I knew I was gonna make that mistake, man, but, again, the lighting in this film really does reflect Reynolds' insecurities and refusal to come out of his lifestyle, his glass box, so to speak. Um, and again, setting wise, everything is high class, uh, very much so reflects the architecture and structure of Britain itself and, you know, post-World War II Britain and, you know, halls and banquets and parties in that setting. Um, and yeah. These, again, these movies could not be any different. And again, in terms of, you know, symbolistic and conflicts, um, the antagonists, shall we say, of this film, uh, again, it is, it is very different. And it is actually a little bit difficult because for Phantom Thread, Alma is initially does set herself up to be the antagonist because when she comes into the house of Woodcock, she really does start to change things up and antagonistically, Reynolds does not like this one bit. Um, he tries to control her like, you know, like he does his other models and say, no, you cannot do this. But again, she does end up being the solution to the conflict overall in the film. Um, whereas in There Will Be Blood, uh, the main antagonist is Father Eli. Because, and it does stem out in, in There Will Be Blood that the main overall conflict or the main gist that Daniel tries to you know, business term circumvent is religion itself because Father Eli at one of the oil drill sites uh, tries to, you know, set up like a congregation there um, and try to amass power through the means of religion as a priest there. Um, and inevitably, Daniel does, you know, beat because business father eli tries to delve into the world of business through not only just his charismatic priesthood and being a priest and you know charming his way in the community in this community but he also wants to as well get some share of profits in oil and drilling sites and you know also set up some you know some drill sites himself um but daniel plainview being daniel plainview and really being ruthlessly determined to get what he wants ruthlessly you know guts father eli um and really does toward i mean at the end of the film he humiliates him and um, that's kind of like the 
conflict and resolution to the story. Um, and yeah, in terms of a biased opinion from me, um, and just my opinion in general, uh, yeah, I prefer, if I were to pick between the two films, which is, again, extremely difficult, um, I would pick The Phantom Thread. And again, I have alluded in previous, you know, episodes that this is probably one of the best films I, I love. This is probably one of the best films, in my opinion, that I've ever seen. Um, I love this film dearly. Um, but aside from that, uh, I don't know. It's The Phantom Thread has a more happier ending, I guess. And that's from what I've seen from Paul Thomas Anderson's films. I don't know. A little bit rare. Because with The Master and... I don't even know if there was an ending for Inherent Vice, if I'm, if I'm honest. Uh, I feel like all of his his endings for his films are just kind of a big old question mark. Or just really depressing. Oh wait, another film that I might review later down the line, Punch Drunk Love, does have a happy ending. But that's, I mean, in terms of the movies that I've seen from him, that's only two films out of his whole filmography so <laughs> um but yeah it's i'd love that the phantom thread shows a realistic struggle in my opinion of you know being in love and being in a relationship and the trial and the trials and tribulations that you go through um and having someone that you love and you care about and you really want to cherish that relationship that you have with them you really want to you know you have that person trying to motivate you to come out of your comfort zone and if you really have someone who's able to do that and not only that it's someone that you love and someone that is willing to do that that's something special and you know that's that's one in a billion in my opinion that's you don't get that uh you don't get that you don't get many people in life that are as patient as that shall we say um and yeah that's that's why i love this film that's why i love the phantom thread um but yeah Alrighty, folks, that's going to conclude this episode of the Weirdest of the Weird podcast. Thanks again for tuning in. Um, if you like what you're hearing, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. And uh, if there's something in a future episode that you want me to cover, be sure to let me know in a comment down below. Um, and, oh, yeah, again, uh, disclaimer, if you guys are going to watch both films or one of them, uh, in terms of uh, content level or content warning from both of these films, these movies are both R-rated, uh, just for some very coarse language. Um, and uh, is there nudity in there? Will be blood? Um, I don't think so. Yeah, it's just uh, I would just say that both films have some very coarse language. So yeah, just be aware of that. All right, guys, thanks again for tuning in, and I'll see you on the flip side. Boop! <laughs>